Rub up your engines! Hey, see, so Scotty, what do you make of the Toyota CHR was discontinued? They're perfectly fine vehicles. They will run a really long time. But Toyota is kind of shortening the um, different amounts of cars that they're building so they don't have 8 billion different ones that all cross into each other. You know, because, I mean, they got compact SUVs. They got subcompact. They got mid-range. You know, they got so many different ones. They make too many different types. There's nothing wrong with the CHRs. If you wanted a vehicle that size that's going to last, that rides like that does, customers that I had that bought them, they liked the cars, right? A lot of people think they're too small. They ride a little rough, whatever. There's so much competition in those, you know, little SUVs that make your head spin. The only reason they really discontinue is because, well, they don't have enough sales and when they want to sell something else, like, they want to sell more RAV4s. They sell a lot of RAV4s. That's the biggest selling one. They make a lot more money selling you a RAV4 than they do a CHR. So a lot of it has to do with money. There's really nothing wrong with the vehicles. You want to buy a used one, there's nothing wrong with them. You can always get parts for them. Chad Files said, my wife's looking at a 24 Jeep Compass and a Mazda CX-50. Which would you go for considering reliability? I wouldn't even think about the Jeep. I would immediately go right to the Mazdas. Mazdas are excellent vehicles. You know, if she likes the way it rides or what she's getting in that vehicle and a gas module, get have her road tested, have her buy it. Don't even let her test the Jeep. So, oh, it's a Jeep. It's cool. It's, they are made like junk. Jeeps actually were starting to get better when it was Daimler Chrysler a while ago. Then Mercedes lost a fortune. <laughs> They sold it to some holding company who suckered Fiat in buying it. Then the quality of Jeep started going, <laughs> and now the quality is even <laughs> further down. Don't even think about the Jeep. Those Mazda, the new ones, those are excellent vehicles. I think Toyota owns 20% of them or something. Their quality, if anything, is going up. A lot of car manufacturers, it's going down. With Mazda, actually, they had uh, a moderate reputation, but now it's getting better and better. They seem to actually be improving over what they used to make. Matthew Baldonado says, I might buy a 2000 Nissan. Pathfinder with 130,000 miles. Is it worth the buy? All right. No, no, no. What are you paying for it? You know, you can get those things pretty cheap. It's 24 years old. The Pathfinders, they got a V6 engine, and yeah, it's a Nissan, but they're either rear wheel drive or four wheel drive, right? And the Jetco rear wheel drive transmissions are actually excellent transmissions. If that thing runs, doesn't overheat, doesn't leak oil all over the place, and shifts good, you can get it cheap, it can still be a decent vehicle. And of course, you always want a mechanic like me or somebody you can find who's a good mechanic to check it out just to make sure, you know, it hasn't been in a flood and it's got all kinds of damage, but it's so old, it can't go for much money, yet it can still last quite some time. They are relative gas hogs, realize that. Do a little research, and if you don't want to pay a lot of money for gas, don't buy that vehicle. But if you don't mind bad gas mods, you can still run quite some time. Numenix and Sports says, Scotty, I got an 09 Mercedes ML 350, and the vehicle takes forever to get the halfway mark on the thermostat. Sometimes it doesn't get to the quarter level. What can be the cost? Okay, just replace the thermostat. The thermostat adjusts the temperatures. Yours is probably broken open. So at least that's good luck, because if it's broken closed, the engine overheats and blows up. Yours is closed open, so it takes longer to warm up. You You'll get worse gas mileage in the winter. You won't get much heat. So just replace the thermostat. Buy one, put it on. It's not that complex of a job. Beyond glory. Could you build a pure mechanical car like the Model T Ford? Sure, you can build whatever you want. The problem is you wouldn't be able to sell it in the United States. They have so many laws for anti-pollution, safety requirements, and all that stuff, and you could never meet the pollution control and the safety control building a purely mechanical car. I mean, airbag safety stuff, that's all run by computers, right? So you could build one, like if you want, go buy an old Model T Ford and fix it up, right? Realize you could not build one and sell it to the public because it wouldn't meet any of the laws. The old stuff is grandfathered in, so you can get an old car and you can fix it up and do as you please. That's why a lot of guys will buy an old car and then they'll soup it up the way they want it and then they don't have to deal with all the laws, right? A lot of people do that nowadays. Roger Patrick says, I have a 2022 CRV and I love everything it offers. I have had three Ford Escapes, which all had recalls and other problems. That's why I switched to Honda. I'm glad I did. Okay, now that's a very good point. As they say to people, well, you know, Honda quality is slipping some, but Honda quality would have to slip about a thousand times to reach the level of Ford. Ford has led the nation in most 
recalls the last three years in a row, and I guarantee you they'll probably lead them in 2024 too. The Honda still make a decent vehicle, you know, it's just that they're slipping a little from how great they used to be. And even the Toyotas, I mean, they're still probably the best ones out there, but they're slipping too. I see problems that I never used to see in them. You know, it's like everything else. The Japanese are learning planned obsolescence from the Americans. You know? They learn everything from us and then, hey, why should we make a car that lasts a million miles? Eh, make one that falls apart at 150 and I'll buy another one. They're learning, unfortunately. Simpson says, Scotty, 2001 Solera. I had a Denso OEM alternator installed within the last year. Put a new Walmart battery about six months and it's dead. What's more likely the culprit? You had an OEM Denso alternator. Those are pretty good. Very easy to test it though. You watch any of my videos, go to any auto parts store. They test them free. Now, if you don't trust people, and a lot of times it's either they're crooked or they're idiots like in an auto parts store testing your car. They don't even know how to hook it up, right? If they don't get the clamp on tight, it'll give you a, a false negative, say it's bad when it isn't. So you can go on Amazon for 50 bucks. You can get a good battery and alternator tester. Do it yourself, right? First, you test the battery and then you test the alternator. Now, if those are both good and it's still dying, that means you have a short somewhere. You can watch my video, fixing battery drain on your car. Could be it's draining the battery. You did buy a Walmart battery. Always look at the date because batteries start deteriorating the minute they're filled with acid. You want to buy a battery that's a month old or less. You don't want one that's six months old because it's been sitting on the shelf deteriorating. Now, when I was a young mechanic, we used to have vacuum sealed batteries. Somebody wanted a battery at my father's gas station, we'd punch the holes the vacuum would open up, we'd fill up with battery acid and charge it up. Everybody's in a hurry now, so they build them at the factory, they fill them with acid, then they start deteriorating, and if they sit on the shelf for six months, they might only last six months. So, have the battery tested first, but it's one of those three things. I don't know, 23 says, Scotty, how can you kind of exact paint for your car? I heard you say you can find the VIN number, is that true? Okay, not the VIN number itself. Under the VIN number, you'll see this thing says C, T, R, color, trim, and that'll give you a number like 2 R J or whatever, right? That is the color of your car. The problem is, it's very hard to get a perfect match of paint. Human beings can see like a million something different shades of colors. It's very, very hard to match it. From my experience, you want to go with a high-tech company. You want to buy the crap that they sell at the auto parts stores that hardly ever matches perfectly. There are companies online, like Duplicolor, that they will have the exact color. I've gotten some and I've matched 20-year-old Lex, a 17-year-old Matrix. I've matched the paint and it looks perfectly fine. And realize one thing, the only way it's going to look good is to spray it on. You get those little bitty lipstick jobs with the paint inside and you dab it on, they look like crap. One, they don't match that well and two, they stick up or they indent because spray paint is even. You really have to spray paint a little area. So if the paints match perfectly, great, but if it isn't, then you got to paint that whole side of the car or it'll look stupid. Snowy Blitz says, Scotty, consumer reports say GM cars are better than Toyota and Hondas. What do you think of this? Well, you know, <laughs> consumer reports, right? If you ever knew what the people who wrote for those things get paid, they get paid nothing. I knew a guy years ago, then he said, well, Scotty, they pay me $500 an article. And I'm like, once a month, 12 months a year, that's not very much money, right? These people don't get paid much. They're not mechanics. And they do things like uh, initial quality of car. What does that mean? Initial quality. What, the first two seconds you own the car? All that stuff is a load of horse manure. Don't believe any of that stuff. There's so much graft and corruption with magazine, whether they're consumer oriented or whether it's an advertising company pretending that they're actually reviewing cars like J.D. Power. People would say, J.D. Power awards for this. J.D. Power is an advertising company, basically. I wouldn't listen to anything a Company like that said. And I certainly wouldn't listen to anybody that says the GM cars are better than Toyotas and Hondas because believe you me, they are not. Tyler Westhead said, why does my transmission warning light come on but it drives fine? The way cars computers work is while you're driving down a road, every like minute and a half, the computer analyzes everything in the car, the engine, the transmission, la 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 la. And after so many trips in a row, if it sees a problem, pfft, 
puts a light on. Transmission warning light on because your computer sees some kind of problem. Now, it could be that it's a few milliseconds off when it shifts into one gear and you don't even notice it, but the computer does. If you are curious, find a guy like me with a fancy scan tool, have him hook it up and he can tell you what the code is. We can road test it, look at the data, and we might say, okay, look, it's shifting from third to fourth, a little bit slower. We get all that time and all that information. Say it was a half a second off. I'll tell him, look, I've seen them there's a second and a half off and they still run for years. So it's something you might live with. But if you're curious, get it scanned, get the code, have a mechanic analyze it for you. Snowy Blood says, Scotty, have you ever worked on Rolls Royce? Would you call them endless money pits? Yes and yes. Of course, Rolls Royce years ago got bought out by BMW and now they got BMW uh, V12 engines in them and they're just rich boys toys, endless money pits. I mean, even back in the day, you have to go back you know, 50, 60 years ago Oh, even longer than that, probably, when they're kind of state-of-the-art cars and they ran, could go all over the world. In World War II, uh, the British took Rolls Royces and they turned them into armored cars to fight Rommel, the Desert Fox. I mean, they were strong vehicles, right? Not anymore. They're just rich men's toys and they are endless money pits. A set of brake rotors might be $800 a piece, right? And you get it for a Toyota for like 50 bucks a piece. Check their resale value. It's garbage. If you do want to buy a Rolls Royce, buy a used one. You'll get it real cheap. <laughs> So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.